All right, in this video, we're gonna cover the other components involved in the CNC build, and more importantly, discuss some things that I messed up so you don't make the same mistakes. Now, the uh, computer and drivers and all that stuff, we've already covered ad nauseum, but there's still a few things I wanna say about these motors. These are the uh, one type brand stepper motors from eBay, uh, 200 sips per rev, a NEMA 23 uh, mounting plate, and 425 ounce inches of torque. Now, I picked that size because uh, looking at other people's builds, that was the size they used. So by empirical engineering, if it worked for them, it'll work for me. Now, one other interesting thing about these is they're dual shaft. On one side, you have quarter inch, and the other side, you have eight millimeters. And that is the part that messed me up. Uh, you see, because I saw that and thought, great, I can uh, pick my other linear drive components to match either quarter inch or eight millimeters, and either will work equally well, but not so fast. The thing is, the mounting plate is only on one end. And unfortunately, with the uh, wire bushing right here, and a little bit of a difference on how the bearings are set internally, these two plates are not interchangeable. So when you buy the rest of your linear drive components in quarter inch, the way I did, you basically commit yourself to using the motors upside down. So while they all are dual shaft, uh, one of them is definitely the primary shaft, and the other is more of second class. So an upside down motor on this guy would be kind of like this here. Where I have it bolted on the carriage with a bunch of long five millimeter ready rod. And I don't know, while this would probably work, it just doesn't sit right with me. You having that long length of uh, you know, rather thin ready rod there. Uh, while well, this guy is zipping across an axis at like 600, 900 IPM on the rapids, uh, that just seems like it'd be likely to torque a bit much with that much top heaviness. Uh, so I'm not really fond of that. And when it comes to the Z axis, it actually wouldn't even work because this one came uh, pre-tapped for four millimeter holes, uh, you know, four millimeter bolts there. I guess it gives you some you know, play in where you align the motor, but it also would mean using four millimeter ready rod on that guy. And if five millimeters is already you know, too thin for my liking, then four millimeters is just, that, that ain't gonna fly. If I had a lathe, or rather if I had a functioning lathe, because those videos are for another time, uh, then this problem would be easy to solve. I would just take the pulleys and then bore them out on the lathe from quarter inch to eight millimeters. What I ended up doing instead was drilling them out very carefully to just below eight millimeters with my American sized bits and then ream them open with sandpaper. And it was a mess, it was a pain in the ass, and it gave me some very uh, tapered and conical holes, but it seems like it will work. Uh, the fit is not the best, but at least it is tight on the ends where it does matter. So it'll probably do, at least until I get uh, you know, the rack and pinion for an upgrade there. And if it doesn't work, then I can go online and just order the right pulleys, you know? But the fact of the matter is, it was a pain in my ass and it was my fault. So think ahead and try to avoid making the same mistake. Now on the uh, Z axis, it was even worse because this coupling here has to be an adapter from quarter inch to eight millimeters now for me to use the motors with the faceplate up against this axis. That means I can't just drill all the way through and then ram it out with sandpaper the same way. And I ended up just drilling halfway down with a, a bit slightly larger than eight millimeters to make the bore fit. And again, because my drill bits aren't even in metric steps. Now, that's not the worst because the axial alignment here isn't quite as crucial as it is with the pulleys. Uh, if you imagine one of these pulleys having its bore placed, you know, like an eighth of an inch off to the side, then you can see how that would make it spin in kind of a wonky motion. And that would like throw your belt tension and the distance traveled off as it goes down the, uh, the rails. Now for this guy, since it is all in one line, as long as these grub screws are uh, strong enough to overcome the stresses from not being perfectly aligned, then it should work. And from, you know, turning by hand, it seems like it will work. And if this part doesn't, then it's one that's easy enough to print or either source a copy online. But no matter how easy that is, it would have been easier to just get the right parts in the first place. While we're looking at the Z-axis, uh, this one here cost me, I think 125 on eBay, and the user sold it to me was CNC uh, four newbie one. It's a four and then a one in there. Uh, now there's about a dozen guys on there who all make very similar products and they're probably roughly the same quality. I mean, the design here is just some aluminum that's been uh, cut and drilled and tapped uh, and then outfitted with a lead screw 
a few rails, and a plastic nut. It's really not that complicated. Uh, it is, though, more complicated than I can make here in my home shop, given that I don't have a mill or that kind of stuff. So I opted to buy it. Uh, I recommend you just do the same. Because if you're watching this video, you probably also do not have a whole machine shop at your disposal. And even if you do, you know, 125 to save the amount of uh, work involved and not to buy the materials, it's probably just a better thing to buy it. Um, now, the guy who sold this did advertise it as having zero backlash. And at least by feel, I can't, you know, tell there's anything discernible. But I have not tested it with any machine because for a plasma, it doesn't actually matter. You uh, measure the Z offset with a plasma torch by actually measuring the arc voltage of the plasma. And the reason for that is, uh, as you're cutting, the plate might warp underneath you, thereby adjusting your Z height. So if you track your Z by counting the steps you've done with the motor, you might actually be wrong because your workpiece has moved on you. Uh, so whether it's backlash or not, doesn't really matter because you're not counting the Z steps anyway. The carriage rollers also came from eBay, and I got mine from the user uh, Cut Metals. But again, there's plenty of people on there all offering a very similar thing. So for roughly another 125 bucks, you can get uh, you know, three rollers, the bolts to go with them, and the bearings to go with them. And in my case, a very crappy set of instructions. Uh, so that is my one beef with this guy, is that his product is great, but it's pretty clear he gives zero fucks about his business. Like, the instructions he gave are written worse than an old Harbor Freight manual, and the product doesn't match the instructions, which doesn't match the listing. Like, what he actually sold me is better than what he had listed, because he had a kit that you would weld together uh, on your own to make, you know, the three faces here. When I actually opened the package up, it came pre-cut and bent. <laughs> so that's actually better than what a bunch of offerings uh, had, but he didn't advertise it as such. So I'm happy that, you know, it saved me the work, but if he actually cared about what he was doing, he would advertise the right thing and make more sales. <sighs> but that's a separate problem. <laughs> Anyway, these guys are designed to just roll along a piece of uh, structural steel tubing, like you see here. Now, as I discussed in the other uh, build video, this belt routing isn't really right, but it's enough for demonstration purposes. So you can see how this uh, roller here would actually transfer um, any uh, irregularities in the tube and then the uh, you know, imprecise fit from these bearings and the slots to your workpiece. So it's not the most accurate solution, but I figure it'll be good enough again for starters. I'll also point out you're going to lose about three and a half inches of travel at either end of the axis from where the uh, actual carriage roller hits the uh, end of travel. So your gantry will be here, but you still can only go this far from the end because, you know, physical things take space. Uh, additionally, you'll have to either uh, shim your Z axis off away from this carriage bolt or uh, make a little clearance hole on the back so it'll fit flat. The timing belt kit gave me five meters of belt and five pulleys for 50 bucks. The belt came originally as one piece, but I've pre-cut it to fit roughly what the machine will take. Now cutting it does take a hacksaw. As you can see there, there's a bunch of steel belts actually running through the belt. And that is a very good thing because it'll minimize the stretch uh, in this belt as the gantry is zipping back and forth. Uh, also, this belt is 15 millimeters wide, so it's generally pretty stout. I'm uh, you know, very pleased with the build quality here. Now, the pitch from tooth to tooth is three millimeters, and the pulleys have 24 teeth, which means in every revolution, you get a little bit less than three inches. I went over all the math for those uh, calculations in the uh, Linux CNC uh, software setup video. Now, as I, as I said, it did come with five pulleys. So I have one, two, three that I bored out, and then one and two as backups in case I do decide to uh, try running the motors upside down. On the electrical side of things, I got myself some shielded cable. Now this will be for wiring up the stepper motors. We've got uh, four conductors, uh, 18 gauge, and that's more than enough to carry the three amps the motors take. Now the shielding means that uh, all four conductors are basically surrounded by a conductive foil. And you can tie that to ground, uh, which keeps errant EMF from either getting in or out. Uh, usually you use shielded cable to keep um, you know, outside EMF from disrupting a signal you're trying to transmit on a wire. But in our case, we're actually using it to keep uh, you know, electrical noise in. Because apparently, uh, steppers are rather noisy, and they can make uh, your limit and home switches uh, trigger spuriously. So, you know, 20 bucks, 50 feet, it's some you know, very affordable peace of mind. 
Uh, also, it is kind of nice to have all four wires, you know, in one bundle. <laughs> Whereas if I use the other wire I already have, I'd be running individual strands and that would probably get pretty messy. For connecting the wires to the motors, I have these Molx connectors here. Now, I'm going with connectors rather than soldering directly because I want to be able to detach the motors later on when I'm doing work on the machine. And I picked Molex connectors because I'm familiar with them from computer work and I already have the crimping tool. Uh, <laughs> these though are uh, the Mini Fit Junior series, not your standard Molex connectors. And I picked these ones because they seem like they'll be a bit more robust and they also have a higher amperage rating. Uh, the rating on both the standard Molex and the Mini Fit Juniors should be more than enough for the three amps we're carrying, but you know, the higher the better. Uh, this was, I think, 12.50 for five on eBay. One thing I am missing here are a couple of drag chains for actually routing the wires and the plasma lead. I know I'll need them eventually, I just haven't gotten that far yet. In the wiring video, I showed a momentary switch as an e-stop and mentioned that that was not ideal. This is more like what you want. When you press it down, it stays down until you twist it to release. Now the terminals here are not labeled, but by looking at it, you can see that green is normally open and red is normally closed. And when you hit the button, they switch. So that is a bit backwards from what I'd expect, uh, with the green side being uh, closed when you hit the red button. But that goes to show you, you should actually test your stuff out and try it uh, before you wire it up. And now one of these will run you about seven, ten dollars again on eBay or wherever. Last but not least, we have the limits and homes. This guy here has connections for uh, common, normally open, and normally closed as well as a little push button, just like any regular micro switch. The difference is this guy adds a lever and a roller, which gives you a bit more safety buffer when you're putting it at the end of uh, your work envelope. Let me demonstrate. So with the standard micro switch, you would have that placed uh, so the carriage bumps into the button at the end of the range of motion, like that. And that would be what triggers the limit. But if you misprogram something and the machine going very fast as it approaches the limit, then it might just crash into this guy, and since it only has this much room to stop, you might knock the, uh, the button off. So these guys can be placed across the direction of travel. And that way, as it comes to the limit, the carriage will actually roll up against this and then trigger the switch. Uh, that way, if you leave enough room at the end for this thing to decelerate, it can come to full stop before actually crashing the whole machine. Uh, it's just a little bit of a you know, nice safety feature to keep you from busting something up. Now, there are uh, other switches you can get that have like Hall effect sensors and that kind of stuff, but I'm going with the mechanical ones for now because, you know, they're simple and they're cheap. It's like $10 for 10 pack. Um, now, I think that is all I have for now. So it is back to work with me.